to everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the time of the Lord that we have come together. And uh, yesterday we had the message in regards to children. And we had wonderful message given by the Lord God Almighty to every one of us, including me and my family, you and your family. And tonight when we are on this message, the second message which we have concluded from the first one, the first message was in regards to the children. And the children are supposed to be brought to the house of God was the first title. Then the children are supposed to honor the father and mother. And then we also saw our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth obeyed his earthly father, earthly mother, because he was working under the earthly father called Joseph in his carpenter's business. So also he obeyed his, his earthly mother called mother of Jesus, Mary. Whatever she used to tell him, he was, and he was also cooperating with brothers and sisters because Jesus later had sisters and brothers. Then the Bible clearly says his life until the last day on the earth. Till he dies, how he was honoring and respecting his earthly relations and relatives and disciples that he had with him. Seeing all that we concluded with one important word last night. That is Ecclesiastes chapter 12. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1, we concluded with the message. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And another translation says, Remember you, your creator, when you are in young age. And not only that, further the Bible says in another translation, Remember who has created you when you come into your strength, beauty and youth. Simple English translation says, Remember now the one who has given you life and you have come to this youth to enjoy according to your mind, according to your strength, according to your beauty. Simply amplified, amplified. And the Bible says, Remember your creator when you are young. With all these translations, when we read it, I am reading for you from King James Version. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days should not come to you. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Greetings to everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We are asking the Lord God Almighty to bless us and therefore let's bow down in this today's message. Having Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1, reading the first line of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we are going to see the message of tonight, children in their youth. Children in their youth. And when the children are in their youth, they shall be able to understand. Nowadays, no children love to hear the word of God. Nowadays, no children want to go to the Sunday services, Friday services. Nowadays, children have their own thoughts, own desires, own wisdom, own knowledge. Nowadays, children, sometimes they don't want to hear the voice of their parents or father or mother. And sometimes, some children are one-sided. Either they only love mother or they love only father. And sometimes children even forget to love God the Father. Because if they love God the Father, they will never forget to love their earthly father, earthly mother. And therefore having this word read, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. And today's message is children in their youth. All the children, 
our children, my children, your children, children on the earth, and those parents are alive. Even if you are married and you may have, you know, you may have kids, or you may say, I have two sons, two daughters, three daughters, four daughters, five daughters, six sons, or whatever the number of children if you have. And you may say, I have, I'm a father now. But if your father, mother is alive, you are also a child. If you are a daughter with so many sons and daughters, if you are a mother with so many children living with your husband, and if your father, mother is alive, you are a child of your father and mother. Therefore, this belongs to every category, those who have their father, mother, and the Bible clearly speaks, those who are in their youth. Let's bow down in the praise of God. Father, we thank you for this day that you have granted us. Tonight, I shall hear the voice of God. We shall hear the voice of God. Our sons and daughters shall hear the voice of God. But today's subject, children shall hear the voice of God in their youth. Every son, every daughter shall hear the voice of God in their youth. And they shall come to the conclusion without God their life will not be blessed. Because in this world, as long as we live, there are evil things. Evil days are going to come more. Help us to understand. We shall love God, love our parents, and we being a children, how shall we live in the youth? The mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Coming back to the special topic of today, children in their youth. And this is very important because nowadays children in their youth, they are so happy to enjoy their youth life. They want to do everything in their life, but they don't want God. Sometimes they don't want also parents. They live with the parents because they get the money from the parents, they get the shelter from the parents, they get the support from parents, Therefore, they are sticking. In case if the children start earning early and if they are able to have more wisdom, knowledge and education, we see what exactly happens in many of the families. And tonight, children in their youth is given this subject to me by the Lord God Almighty. Every time we get the biblical messages, in the biblical messages, I always go back to Joseph, Daniel, David, and so many other young men and women like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. And today, I have decided to take out a few young men, those who had a special character in their life. And with a special character, they were shining and they were very loved by the Lord God Almighty. My brothers, my sister, some of the topics you already know it. Therefore, I have taken little different ways so that he shall, he shall guide me and guide all our sons and daughters. It shall bring the change because this is the book of the Holy Bible. Therefore, the first subject that I have taken in regards to Joseph. Bible clearly speaks about Joseph, a boy who was not praying much. A boy who was loved by his father. In his young age, he saw the dream and he caught the dream that God gave it to him. Today, if I ask a question to how many sons and daughters do you have any dream? Do you have any visions? Do you have any revelations? Many of us must be blinking because neither we saw the vision, neither we heard the revelation, neither we understood the word of God, neither we hear the voice of God, now that we have any type of dreams, because unless and until I and we grow in the spiritual realm, we cannot hear the voice of God. God is ready to speak, but many of us, we don't want to hear. The subject is special, or especially for the children in their youth. And this special topic called the topical you know, subject, because this is connected to them and their life and their future. We are bringing the example of not ours. We are not bringing the example of our fathers or mothers or best you know, person that we know it 
or okay. educated person know. They bring the biblical examples so that you can learn something. We can understand where we are standing. We shall be able to understand what is the plan of God in our lives. Probably you must have had some dreams. Probably you must have had some type of vision that you heard. Or you must have noticed yourself either in the vision or sometimes you are always planning, planning, planning. That, type, that can be a vision, inside vision, insight vision. So the Bible clearly speaks about Joseph. Joseph was the son in Genesis chapter 30 verse 24. The Bible clearly speaks that Joseph was son of Jacob. His personal appearance started in Genesis chapter 39. In Genesis chapter 39, his appearance started. That he started coming into the life of people and he started getting into the, you know, close relationship with his father because Joseph had a dream. And Joseph is a young boy. The Bible clearly says his father loved him very much. And because he loved him, he was loved by his father. Father prepared a special color coat for him. But Joseph, he had a prophetical dream about his future. The dream was given unto him what he is going to be. And when he had a dream and he started explaining the dream to his brothers and his fathers, father in the beginning did not understand how come a father has to bow down to the son. But yet Jacob, he took that dream and kept that dream in his heart thinking what he is going to be. And the Bible clearly says, but his brothers were not happy. All their own brothers were not happy. The world is turning evil, my brothers. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, we saw the world was already evil because evil came into this world through first woman called Eve and the first man called Adam. After this evil came into this world, the evil started in everybody's life. And the word of the Lord clearly says, this evil is going to grow more. End of the days, the evil is going to grow more. More evil things will happen. Own will not recognize their own. Parents will not recognize their children. Children will not recognize their parents. Husband, wife will not recognize one another. They will talk about material beauty, material and beauty, finances, luxury. They'll be, you know, talking about the free living and they will have so much of concept about the world. And many leaders of the world will bring so many other concepts which will be acceptable by the people if they are not in the word of God. If they are not fearful to God, if they are not knowing God's word, if they do not know God's law, such people will be surely lost into this world. And their life will be totally miserable. And we do not know what will happen to their soul. But Bible gives us the answer. Anybody who is far away from God, their soul will not enter into the kingdom of God. Anybody who does not accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, his soul, her soul will not enter into the kingdom of God. My brothers, my sister, when he had a prophetical dream according to Genesis chapter 37, the Bible clearly says all his brothers started hating him. Hated is there in the world. Hated is there in the family. Hated is there with your own brother and own sister. Hated is not going to go away from the world because it started in the family. It rooted in the family. It is rooted in our forefathers' blood. It was rooted from the generation when it was created by God. Hated was there as soon as Eve committed a sin and broke the law of looking at the tree, plucking of the fruit, eating of the fruit, giving it to her husband and both fell down from the praise of God from Eden Garden. From that moment hatred started. That's why when the child was born or children were born to them, first son was Cain, a farmer, second son was Abel who was a shepherd and the Cain. Cain killed his own brother because of hatred of offerings of one another to the living God. Hatred was from the beginning, but this hatred is not going to remain safe. It's going to increase my brothers, my sister. If you are in the word of God, if you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this hatred will not be there because the love of God will change you inside. And the love of God will explain or it will come out of you outside and you'll be able to understand who is your own, who is your blessed people, 
what God has taught us, how to love the others and how to love our enemies and how to deal with the people of God, all the humans on the earth, not religion, all the humans on the earth with the love of God, with love of Jesus. The Bible clearly says Jacob, his father, loved Joseph, but the brothers started hating him. In Genesis chapter 37, when you read verses 27 and 28, Bible says his brothers started plotting a plot against Joseph. Whenever they saw him from far, they started saying only one thing. Look, our brother is coming. They did not say like that. They started saying, look, the dreamer is coming. Look, the dreamer is coming. Because they knew whenever Joseph came there to the brothers and all his you know, kindred, he used to tell them the dream that he saw. He used to tell them the dream that he noticed in his dream by given by God. And he was telling his brothers because it was from God Almighty. So he was loving to tell them. And with the love he has told them. But they had a great hatred towards him. They sold him into Egypt. His brothers then reported to his father. Verses 29 to 35. Genesis chapter 37 verses 29 to 35. His brothers came back to his father Jacob and said, We are very sorry, your brother, your son, that you loved him more. Joseph is being killed by the wild animals. And they showed him the clothes of his their brother, which was actually slain with the animal's blood. And they said, This is, is your son Joseph to whom you love. This is his clothes. My brothers, my sister, hatred was in them. Hated because of the God-given dream. Hated because Joseph is going to become somewhere more, you know, higher position. And today God wants to tell you whatever position you are, however you are going to prosperous. And always remember, don't jump for a prosperity, but step by step go into the prosperity. When you are prosperous, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Understand the plan of God for your prosperity. Probably it might be a phonesis, it might be a status. It might be your handsomeness or beauty. It might be in the luxury living. It might be in the living of all the things that God is going to give you. Be humble and be simple so that the devil, the adversary shall not touch any of your relatives and friends and bring all manner of disaster in your life when God is giving you the prosperity. Joseph did the same thing. He told his brothers about the dream and all the brothers started hating him. And not only that, with the hated day, sold him into Egypt. And when they sold him, they sold him to an officer called Pharaoh's officer by name Potiphar. And when he does, they have sold him, they sold him as a slave. So Joseph, who had a color coat from his father, now does not have the color coat, does not have clothes on his body. Little what he has, he has it to cover his shame. And then he became a slave in Pharaoh's kingdom to Potiphar who was taking care of Pharaoh. My brothers, my sister, his dream is still not gone out of him. Many times when trial comes, when tribulation comes, we say like that, I will not come. I will not pray. I will not read my Bible. God has not given me anything good. God has always given me sorrows. I got less marks in my studies. I studied so hard and I answered all the questions. How come the other one who does not study got so much of marks, but my marks are less than him? How the teacher is always loving another student and another girl student or boy student and does not love me. I'm always shining with good marks. I remain very quiet in the class. I honor all the teachers. I respect every one of them, but I don't get any manner of respect. Don't. Don't get upset with all these type of things. This is called the world. In world, you will never have a proper judgment. In the world, you will never get justice. In the world, you will never be loved equally. Therefore, you have to understand, same thing happened to Joseph. But Joseph was quiet because he had a special dream in his life. All the children, those who are in youth, all the children, those who are in youth today, even if you don't have a dream, create a dream for you. I will be like this. Recently, I was encouraging a man from India and he wanted to study further, but he had no facilities to study. 
He was always calling me and asking me, what shall I do? I am with a very, you know, steady mind and I have good education. I got so much of percentage, but I do not have support. I told him, if it is possible, ask your teachers what you shall do it. Ask your professors how you shall go ahead, whether you should study further or whether you should join the college or whether you should join anything. And we guided him according to the will of God and guided him and told him to go and visit three important things in India. Number one, Air Force. Number two, Army. Number three, Navy. In all this, go and give your personal interview and see what is to be done. He brought three books from the old market, more old book market, three books to study himself. And he started studying. And later he realized army will be better for his life. And he joined the army. When he joined the army, parents were not happy. When the parents were sending him for this selection, the parents were crying. Mother was crying. I have two daughters and one son. What you are going to do in the army? I don't want to see your dead body. I don't want to see anything that's happening to you. And mother said this word very cryingly. And my brothers, my sister, the officers, those who took him, the officers, those who took him on that day, they gave him the hope to the father and the mother. And today, after completing seven years, he has got promotions. He has got something. And he remembered me. And what he says, he said, that day you created a dream in my life. You gave me the understanding from the book of the Holy Bible and you created a dream in my life. And because of that dream, I am completing my dream and I want to go ahead with the dream. I want to tell every young son and daughter, every youth and every young girl and young boy in their youth, I want to tell you, even if you don't have a dream, you create a dream for you. You do not to think only simply that only when God speaks to me, I will obey. When God gives me the dream, then I will obey. If God calls me, then I will do what God calls me to do. Don't depend upon that. God has given you wisdom. God has given you knowledge. God has given you eyes to see good things. God has given you a body to exercise and do well in your body and enjoy everything. For all that, you seek the Lord. Ask the Lord, what is your plan? How I shall be? What I shall be? And God will give you the dream. You can create your dream if you do not have a dream. You need not to worry waiting upon God only that God should give me the dream, give me the dream and then I will. No. You don't ask God, God, shall I eat this? Shall I eat that? No. You straight away go and see which is good. You eat it. You don't control your food. God said only eat little. No, you don't control that. You eat according to your satisfaction. Similar way, create a dream for you. That dream will be for your, your, your better future. That dream should be according to the word of God. That dream should be to glorify God. You, young man and young woman, today, God is telling you, create a dream for you so that you shall be successful. Every dreamer, God makes him successful. Why? Because your dream has to be aligned with the word. Your dream has to be aligned with the voice of God. Your dream has to be aligned with the voice of God and the word of God and obey the laws of God. Your dream has to come to pass. The Bible, I have a testimony. I have told him, if it is possible, send me a small clip of your army shootings and army, what exactly you do and how you compete. I gave him an idea. I gave one of the girl also in Bangalore when she came to our church and she was studying. She was from UP, North India. Due to some trial and tribulation, she had come to Bangalore and she had met me. And when she had met me, we encouraged her. I told her my son went for piloting. Some of our church people went for piloting. And if you have any desire, such things you can take up. When I told her to also go and join Army, Navy or Air Force, she went and studied in abroad the piloting. She studied in abroad and came back. And when she came back, she's working in Indigo now. Now she's working as a pilot, lady pilot. And she's a believer. And she's working as a lady pilot. And she's going to Bethel Church of Bangalore. And she was in our church also. My brothers, my sister, that day the dream was given unto her. Totally not a Christian background. Does not know what is dream. Maybe she knows. But she does not know how to hold the dream. She does not know how to catch the dream. She does not know how to make the dream fulfilled. Probably some of your sons and daughters have the same problem. Young sons and daughters, I want to tell you, you create a dream out of your own life. Put that dream before God. Tell him, God, this is my dream. Please help me, whether it is fulfilling in your sight. 
Help me to know that this dream is for it from you. Help me to know what I plan in my mind is acceptable to you. God will give you the answer. Peace will come. Joy will come. Help will come. Nice feeling will come. When those things are happening, you are selected by God for the plan and for the dream that you have. My brothers, my sister, Joseph never left his dream. He was always working in his dream. Though he was sold as a slave, he honestly worked as a slave. He was clean shaved. He had no clothes on his body. He covered his clothes only to cover his shame. But he was honest in Potiphar's house. He was working very honestly. And Potiphar noticed him as a godly and goodly child. And Potiphar one day said to Joseph, Joseph, you have a godly spirit in you. You have a goodly spirit in you. I want you to be with me and take care of my house and take care of all that I give it to you. Here is the key. Here is the ring and here is the cloak. And he was there in all over Egypt to rule and remain there. His life was changed just because of only one important thing, his dream. He suffered in a dry pit, suffered from his own father, suffered from his own brothers and sisters, suffered from his own brothers, sorry, brothers, which Bible speaks about. They put him in a dry pit. They sold him to the party for the Pharaoh's uh, no, captain. Not only that, they did not actually respect him, gave him all manner of trouble. But what was Joseph? Joseph was a shepherd boy. He was taking all the sheep of the father, mother, brother, sister, everybody, and was going to the mountain and feeding them and bringing them back. Every shepherd is honored by the Lord in the Old Testament time. Every shepherd who took care of the animals, they were honored by the Lord God Almighty, and God made them something big and great. Today also, when you are a shepherd, shepherd, which type of shepherd? Preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. A good gentleman teaching, preaching the word of God to the people and making them to understand who Jesus Christ of Nazareth is. You are a shepherd, but you are a shepherd of men and women. And surely God will honor you and bless you and keep you into that position where you shall be lifted up and you shall be blessed. How many times we think about, I will go abroad, I will make money. I will go to this country, I will study there. I will have a greater salary and greater position. I will go to that country, that country honors men and women, and I will become something with earning, and I will have good house, I will have a big car, I will have a, this type of things to live. My brothers, my sister, all these dreams are earthly. All these dreams are earthly. Young sons and daughters, these are the earthly dreams, and all these earthly dreams finishes here itself. Nothing comes along with you. But one dream that you have, and the dream of the Lord that you get it. And the dream to become a good shepherd. The dream to preach the gospel and teach the gospel. The dream to preach the gospel and teach the gospel. The dream to sing for the glory of God. The dream to live for the, the dream to live for the Lord will never end up. It will begin here. It will continue in your life. It will continue in the days to come. Even when you grow, go to the grave, that dream will continue. And that dream will be giving you the special seat in the kingdom of God, which Jesus Christ of Nazareth has prepared for you a great mansion, a great crown, a great blessing, a great victory, a great position. Eternally you will be blessed. No other dream will bless. No other dream will bless. You might have traveled, left one country and gone to another country to earn money. You might have had a big amount. That amount is not going to help you. You might have had a big house and many more things does not give you that peace, that joy and happiness. You must be able to understand your dreams must be aligned with the word of God. Joseph had a greater dream, dream to become something greater. But in the behind all that, he was an ordinary shepherd boy. So also today, as a young man and young woman, create a special dream for you so that you shall be able to fulfill the dream. Let the dream not be earthly. Let the dream not be worldly. Though you have a desire of the world, remember when you have a godly dream and godly thinking and godly understanding and obeying God's laws and commandments and teachings of God, all of the things will be surely added unto you. Have some spiritual dream. Create a dream, you know, a spiritual dream. And this is the best time when you are in young age, when you are in youth, create that dream for you so that you shall be successful. The Bible clearly tells us another person, Joshua. Now there are people, those who do not have, you know, more educated parents. 
Some of the children, some of their children, when they come into the youth, they do not know what to do. They do not have proper guidance from their parents. When they do not have a proper guidance from parents, I want to tell you, take the, take the advice of the spiritual people. Create a spiritual father for you. Understand who can be a good spiritual father for you? Uh, who can be a good spiritual brother for you? Who can be a good spiritual mother for you? Who can be a good spiritual sister, brother for you? So that they can give you spiritual understanding. They can feed your mind with the spiritual understanding. They can give you the word of God as a spiritual food to you. And they can show you the way of the Lord Jesus Christ and so that your way shall be totally perfect because the Bible says Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the way, truth and the life. Children, those who do not have, you know, parents educated, well educated or well settled or having everything, you know, for such sons and daughters in the youth, I want to guide them and I want to tell them what you should do. You should have a spiritual father, spiritual mother, spiritual brother, spiritual sister, and take a spiritual guidance from them. Worldly guidance you need not to take from anybody. I again and again I tell you, worldly guidance will help you to work here, live here, but that is not going to give you satisfaction. That's not going to bless your life. Only godly chosen life is going to bless you. Godly ways are going to bless you. So therefore you must have a godly parents to have a good guidance for you. I'm very happy some of the parents in our church here and church around that I meet the people are educated and they're able to guide their sons and daughters. But this advice is for them, those who do not have highly educated parents, highly educated people around their houses or relatives. And I'm talking about Joshua now. The Bible clearly says Joshua was chosen by Moses as God told Moses to select a man same like you. Same wisdom, same knowledge, same strength, same wisdom, same vision, same understanding, who can recognize God's calling. Remember, Joshua was selected by Moses because he had a similar quality. And the Bible clearly says, he was the son of Nun, or Nun, Numbers 13. <clears throat> In Numbers 13, all little details about Joshua is mentioned. He was also called Joshua, so also Jehoshua, and so also Hosea, and he was son of Nun. The word of the Lord clearly says he was associated with Moses. He was one among the people, those who want to go to the promised land with Moses. He never had any desire, but he was obedient to the call that God gave it to him. He was obedient to the call that he had in his life. He was very obediently working and he was doing everything what Moses used to tell him. He was the right hand of Moses. He became a spiritual father for him. And Joshua accepted the understanding from Moses. The word of the Lord clearly says he was associated with Moses. Exodus chapter 24. And he was accepting all the teachings of Moses in his life. And he had, then after seeing Moses, he got a zeal, spiritual zeal. How Moses is working for God. How Moses is talking to God. When Moses is to go to pray, Joshua was the first one to receive him back after the prayer that he has done with God the Father. He was noticing Moses very clearly. My brothers, my sister, the word of God clearly says in Numbers chapter 11, he has a spiritual and religious desire to seek the Lord. And he was zealous about it and was watching Moses all the time. How he prays, how he talks to God, why he talks to God, what God answers him, what God is telling him, and how Moses is coming and commanding to the people of Israel. Same he followed. Spiritual father he became. Moses became spiritual father to Joshua. He accepted that. He accepted that. He understood. And the Bible clearly says he cut into the favorable report from Moses that this is a lovely man. This is a God chosen man. Because God told him, take Joshua, who is a perfect, who is the same identity like you. Courage, strength, Warrior, wisdom, knowledge, and above all, fear of the Lord. My brothers, my sister, every young man and young woman should be able to understand. When you and I fear God, God selects us. Let us have the fear of God, no matter whatever the age may be. When we have the fear of God, including me, God will select us. God will guide us. God will make us our dream to be successful. Joshua's, you know, 
fear to the Lord was the calling and God commissioned him through Moses and ordained him through Moses and made him a very responsible person under the office of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 34 that the Bible clearly says he was divinely inspired. He was guided by the word of the Lord divinely. Moses explained to him what was the plan of God for him and Joshua became submission to Moses as a spiritual child. Young man and young woman, every young son and daughter, every children in your youth, you have to have some spiritual man of God, some spiritual woman of God, spiritual father to guide you and lead you so that you shall be able to lift up your life and know what is the plan of God in your life when your parents are little less in education, little less to guide you, little less to tell you in spiritual life. The Bible clearly says, Then the promised land blessing was declared unto Moses. And the Mo then Moses declares unto jo Joshua. And Joshua becomes the lead character or leads the people of Israel to the land of Canaan. Joshua chapter 1. And that the scripture, Joshua chapter 1, clearly tells you to make you understand how God told him that he has to go forward. Then after Moses gave him the command and commission and anointed him in the sight of God the Father. The Bible clearly says, then God started speaking to him. God started telling Joshua, Joshua, you shall not turn to the left. Joshua, you shall not go to the right. Joshua, you shall go straight. Joshua, you shall follow the laws of God. Joshua, you shall know the commandments of God. My brothers, my sister, unless and until you submit to the spiritual authority, God will not speak to you. You have to submit yourself to the spiritual church. You have to submit to the right Bible-believing church, Bible-believing you know, preacher, pastor, you know, you know, teacher, priest, whosoever it may be, spiritually, totally according to the will and the word of God, same like Moses. Have you formed anybody? If not, from today onwards you start praying and God will give it to you. In your youth, you shall find that spiritual man, man of God, father spiritually, mother spiritually. And you shall surely be guided with the word of the Lord. And Bible clearly says, then Moses, when he commanded them, anointed him, commissioned him, then Joshua started leading the people of Israel to the promised land, land of Canaan. And my brothers, my sister, Moses could not go, but Joshua reached there. Elderly man could not go, but Joshua reached there. Joshua being a young child, young man, reached there along with the people of Israel. The reason is Joshua submitted to the authority of spiritual father. Joshua submitted later after Moses to God the Almighty to hear his voice, obey his laws, obey his teachings and obey the way that he was leading. Young man and woman, if you want to be successful in your life, you want to reach unto your goal, you want to reach, reach unto the destination, you want to become something great in your life spiritually, and so also honorable man and woman and son and daughter to your parents follow Joshua's instruction and you shall be surely blessed. We are going to continue the second two important character. And these characters are so important that will encourage many of the mothers, those who got sons in their family life. This, char this character will help you and bless you as a mother, as a father. That God gave you a son and you dedicated your son to God. Coming back to the scriptures, another important person that the Bible speaks about who was in his youth. He was nobody. He is nobody but Samuel. The Bible speaks about Samuel and this boy is a miraculous boy. His birth is miraculous and mother prayed for his birth. And that's what I want to tell you today. That you should be able to understand that prayer and your relationship with God gives you any manner of blessings. Even if the devil has stopped your blessing, God can give you those blessings of God. Probably you may have son. Probably you may have one son, one daughter. Nevertheless, two sons, two daughters, three daughters, four daughters. Nevertheless, but God wants to teach you and teach me from this young man's character called Samuel. Bible says his birth is a miracle, miraculous birth of you know, Samuel in Samuel chapter 1 and how he came into the world. The Bible says his mother's name is Hannah who prayed all the time to God. God, I don't have any son. I'm a married woman. 
have no children and I have no son and no daughters. But if I get a son, I vow unto you today, I will give the son unto you. Mother prays, a married woman called Hannah prayed, a prayer to dedicate her future sons and daughters to God. What a dedication. What a great understanding. Son has to be dedicated to the Lord. Today it is so sad. Parents have sons. The sons don't come to the church. They have not seen the church at all. They have not read the Bible at all. Neither they are going to the church and taking any manner of blessings of the any spiritual man or called pastors. They have not heard the word of God in the church. Never read the word of God. They have too many clothes. They have too many luxurious things. They have all type of comfort. They get weekly holiday, but church they don't want. They want to walk around all the world, but they don't have ways to the church. What a sad thing. And this message is for those sons, those who have not come to the house of God. My brothers, my sister, the Bible clearly says, Hannah prayed for a boy. And Hannah prayed that this shall be a boy from you. So that I shall dedicate this. Bible clearly says, before she could become pregnant, before she could get conceived, she consecrated her son before his birth to God, saying that, Lord, if you give me a son, I will give this son back to you. Bible clearly says, Samuel's mother's name is Hannah, and she was blessed later. And then she started planning and preparing the young boy called Samuel, how he can go into the house of God. How he can go and hear the word of God. How what he has told him, he will also hear in the house of God. It was nobody else but the mother's responsibility because her husband's name is mentioned, Elkanah. But mother was more interested to tell him, Samuel, you are not mine. I ask of God and God gave it to me. I ask of the Lord and the Lord has given unto me. You are the only son. You are the first son. But yet, I will give you to the Lord. This is what you are supposed to do. You are supposed to serve the Lord. You are supposed to live for the Lord. You are supposed to hear the voice of the Lord. You are supposed to know the word of God. You are supposed to be a blessing to the people of God. And small boy Samuel was hearing all that mother was teaching him. My brothers, my sister, Bible clearly says she weaned his mind. She prepared his mind. She prepared when the mind is ready, then the heart also will respect. And so also the body acts. If the mind is disturbed, if mind does not have a concept of God, heart cannot accept anything and the body cannot work like that. Therefore, one has to understand, mind has to be set right. Some of the sons and daughters' mind is not set right today. They are so worldly, they know all the worldly things. You did not teach them, but they know worldly things. They know which, you know, which theater is good. Which cinema is good? Which hotel is good? Where the drama is good? Where the city is good? Where I can go and enjoy? Which bar is good? All this type of knowledge, parents are not given. But they have the knowledge. Because worldly knowledge, anybody can obtain. Worldly knowledge, any young son can take it. Worldly knowledge, any daughter can obtain. But godly knowledge, they can obtain only from mother and father. Those are mothers here, I request you. Like me, I always pray to the Lord, Lord, help me, guide me so that I shall be a good guidance to my sons and daughters that you gave it to me. Similar prayers, you can make it. Anna was praying all the time. I will not bring him to the house of God unless and until his mind is ready, unless and until he's prepared in his heart, unless and until he knows that he's been chosen by God, unless and until he knows that this is the mother who asked of the Lord for a son and God gave her a son. I ask of the Lord, and the Lord gave me a son. This was the this was the concept, and this was the fact spiritually she has put into uh, into you know Samuel's mind, and Samuel got it. Today, many parents do not want to tell this. Many parents do not want to teach their sons. Today, many parents, many parents do not taught their daughters and sons what they are supposed to teach them. 
What to do? They don't want to listen. What to do? They are going here. What to do? They are going there. You are the father. You are the mother. God will ask you, what did you do with the son that I gave it to you? What did you do with the doctor that I gave it to you? What did you teach them? God will ask you. You are answerable to God, to nobody, because he is the rewarder. Because the Bible says, God is the rewarder of every womb. Every womb. In every womb, whatever you have received, God is the rewarder of that womb. So God will ask you for that mother, that father, what you have done with the gift that I gave it to you. And the word of God clearly says, his mother was singing a song in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and glorifying God for the gift that she had. And then she ministered unto Samuel <coughs> to preparing him, winning his mind so that he shall know that he is a godly child and he shall work for God and he shall live for God and continuously he shall be there and not in the house of mother or father. That is mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 3 and the Bible clearly says he became a blessed child for the parents. The Bible also says he became a prophet to many people in Israel. He became a prophet of the Israelites. The reason why he became prophet, because prophets are honored more than any other, you know, disciples and apostles, you know, and pastors and preacher. Prophets are honored more. So that when he becomes a prophet, everybody will honor and everybody will know what type of boy is this and how he came into this world. He's a miracle boy called Samuel. His mother Hannah prayed all the time. Coming back to the word of God. He was the prophet. First Samuel chapter 3 says he was a prophet in the, for the people of Israelites. He also became later judge and he was a perfect judge carrying out the will of God and according to the word of God. The Bible clearly says the jobs that Samuel took, the responsibility that Samuel took, everything was spiritual. Everything was aligned with the word of God. Everything according to the will of God and whatever God wanted him to do. Bible clearly says, then he started serving in the tabernacle. He was serving according to the will of God under the spiritual father called Eli or Eli. And he was continuously serving him under him to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Whatever he wanted to do, he did it there. Bible clearly says, when God started speaking to him, he started speaking to people of Israel. He was giving the guidance to the people of Israel. He was guiding the people of Israel to how to lead their life, how to clean, how to lead a clean life. What is the kingdom of God? What is the purpose of God? Every man and every woman on the earth should be able to get established well for the kingdom of God. According to 1 Samuel chapter 13, and the Bible clearly says, when God spoke, he heard the voice of God. He went and anointed David and David became king. 1 Samuel chapter 16. The Bible clearly says when God called him by his name, he understood the calling of God. To the young sons and daughters, many do not understand the calling of God. But when God spoke to him, he understood the calling of God. He went to David king. Uh, he anointed David and made him a king. Not only that, the Bible also says in a very important way, continuously he was guiding David. Continuously he was telling him how to rule. Continuously he was giving him the knowledge of God. And... The Bible says that David shined as a great king for the people of Israel. Coming back to the last topic. After this last topic, I would like to tell you one important thing about Samuel. Remember, if you have heard from your parents anything concerning the Lord's guidance, you should take that God's guidance from your parents. Don't neglect it. When you receive it, God will make you something. Many people do not want the guidance of the parents. And when they don't take the guidance of the parents, they don't become what they shall be. It is the responsibility that the children shall look unto the father and say, my father is a church goer. My father is a very holy man. My father does not tell lies. My father obeys the laws of God. My father obeys the commandments of God. My mother always sings in the church. She always goes to the church. She always encourages us to read the Holy Bible. She always tells the church is very, very important. My brothers, my sister, such type of words should come out of your sons and daughters. Check up your testimony today. As a father, as a mother, check up your testimony today. Are we doing the same? Are we guiding our sons like that? Are we an example before our sons and daughters? 
Are we a great testimony so that our children can say, my father is a great man. My mother is a great woman. She has taught me the word of God. Oh, my father's testimony is so nice. Seeing him, I started going to the church. Seeing him, I started reading the Holy Bible. Seeing him, I started stopping. I started, you know, you know, stopping the drug addiction or evil addiction and all type of evil desires. And I overcame all type of desire of the world. I became holy. I became perfect. Is there a testimony? My brothers, my sister, fathers are the testimony to the children. Mothers are the testimony to the children. And today you understand what type of testimony you are for your sons and for your daughters. Here is another, finally, another man. And after that, I want to pray more today. I want to spend my time more in praying for all the sons and daughters, those who are hearing this message. Not only that, I want to pray for all the sons and daughters so that they shall totally become godly. Their mind shall be totally tuned with the word of God. They shall know how to honor the father and mother. They shall also honor God the father. They shall dedicate their life to give themselves to the Lord God Almighty and become something great in the life. What of God clearly says another mighty man, another famous man, King David. And he was a king of Israel. Verse 7, chapter 16, verse 11 says he was a shepherd boy. Very clearly. Can you understand? Shepherd boy knows nothing about the house. Shepherd boy not, knows nothing how to rule this house. Shepherd boy does not know what should be done in the house. What is required? What is to be bought? How the family life has to be taken care? What is the good thing required for parents? Nothing at all. Shepherd boy knows only one thing. Take all the sheep, feed them outside, bring them back home, rest, early morning get up, take the sheep and go to the mountains. But God had appreciated one important thing of this man called David. That was his worship. Engage, he started worshiping. Teach your sons and daughters to worship God. No matter if they are not able to understand what is, what is the meaning. One day, because you taught them the worship, they will receive the blessings of God. The Bible clearly says, ordinary shepherd boy became a worshiper. All the time, whenever he used to go along with the sheep, all the sheep of his brothers, father and the cleaner, he was always praising God in the wilderness. Not only that, he had the strength of God and wisdom of God and knowledge of God. Therefore, he knew how to take care of his sheep. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, that when the time came, he killed the lion, he killed the bear. And he had a special wisdom and knowledge to catch them and kill them. Just because he was a worshipper of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God had given him that wisdom and that knowledge. So that, you know, with the normal strength, he was able to kill the lion as well as bear. Bible says he was anointed from his youth. How that anointing came? The Bible says how that anointing came? That anointing came because whenever he used to go to the wilderness, he was worshipping God. Whenever he went with the sheep, he was calling upon the name of the Lord. Whenever he went in the ship, in the forest or in the mountain top, he used to call upon the name of the Lord. Play the timbrel, play the music, sing for the Lord and glorify God. And that's why the Bible clearly says God heard him. God chose him. God anointed him through Samuel and he became a king. The Bible clearly says he was anointed by God and he was chosen by God for a special purpose. But Bible has one important record about his life. Bible says when God anointed him, he became a king. And after becoming a king, he made a big error. His sons and daughters in their youth can fail. Sons and daughters in their youth can fall if they understand the principle what is good to look and what is not good to look. What happened to Eve? Yesterday also I told you. Eve looked unto the tree. Eve looked unto the fruit and then she plucked the fruit. Bible clearly says she saw the tree, she saw the fruit and she plucked the fruit. Similar way, if young sons and daughters, if they know what to see, and how to control their eyes to not to see through that their life will be blessed and they will not be fallen down in sin unclean practices drugs drinks and pleasure of the world the bible clearly tells us very very importantly that when he became a king he saw a woman called Bathsheba, and she was taking a bath and she was 
undressed that time. And she did not have clothes on her body. The time that she looked, he looked unto her, she fell in her love for her. The word of the Lord clearly says, his look brought the folly in his life. His look brought the sin in his life. And my brothers, my sister, same thing is happening from the generation that God has created, heavens and earth. He looked unto the fruit. He looked unto the tree. She saw, the Bible says. David also saw this woman when she was taking a bath and his mind totally changed. Wicked things got into his heart. Wicked plans entered into his mind. He killed her husband in the war and took her as a perfect wife to him. My brothers, my sister, he was thinking that he was doing very perfect. Many times I also think like that, but we don't understand. The prophet of the Lord called Nathan came and told him, what you are doing is not perfect. Your life has to be changed. But one important thing he appreciated, I appreciate that David was able to hear being a king. Today my request is, how many young sons and daughters are here? If your parents are telling, are you hearing? Are you hearing the man of God who tells you do this, do that? Are you able to hear when the man of God, our priests, pastors, leaders and elders, when they tell you, read the Holy Bible? When they tell you, understand God's laws and commandments and teachings of God, are you able to hear? Today, my message is for the children, those who are in youth. If you get such type of advices, if anybody advises to you to read the Holy Bible, don't neglect it. Read the Bible. If you don't know how to read the Bible, ask them, those who have told you to read the Bible. Go back to them and ask them so that you shall not fall in your youth. You shall never go away from the Lord in your youth. Not knowingly, you shall, your soul shall never go to the hell. And Bible clearly says, when Nathan prophesied upon his life, he accepted. And soon after that, he changed his life. Therefore, one of the best, best, what, what do you call, that his confession and repentance and all manner of understanding is written in his book of the Psalms. In Psalms 6, verses 1 to 10, he writes about his crime. In Psalms 32, verses 1 to 11, he writes about his secret things. In Psalms 38, verses 1 to 40, he writes about all type of confessions. And in Psalm 51, he writes about open, openly he writes about all the sin that he has committed. And till today, it is written in the book of the Bible. How come God has allowed this Confession and repentance of David in the book of the Bible. Because God loves confession. God loves the man who confesses his sin. God loves the woman who repents for her sins. And God accepts such man and woman. And God accepts such young men and women. So that God gives them another chance. And gives them better chance. And makes their lives totally successful and victorious. Every young man in his youth. Every young woman in her youth. Shall be able to confess and repent. That will make you closer to God's heart. And when you become a closer to God's heart, your life is blessed. Your life is victorious. Your life is successful. Sin will never entangle you. Your body will not be there. Sicknesses will not come to you. You will not be under curses. You will not be drug addict. You will not be a drunker man. You will not be called as a drunkard. You will not be called as a vagabond child. You will never have a curse of parents. You will never have a curse of God. And your life will be totally changed. Are you ready and are you willing? That is what I would like to ask you today. My brothers, my sister, it is better for us to submit ourselves unto the Lord. Young sons and daughters, I request you that you submit yourselves unto the Lord so that you shall be blessed. Learn to repent as David repented. Learn to confess as David confessed. Learn to say your crime unto God as David said in Psalms 6, in Psalms 32, in Psalms 38, and real and open confession in Psalms 51. My brothers, my sister, the Bible clearly says, after that, David was totally ruling the kingdom in a very good manner. Bible gives us the example of these four important men. There are many like that. But take this example so that you shall be blessed. The Bible clearly says, these children in their youth understood God. These children in their youth set out their life. These young children in their youth had a dream of God. These young children in the youth understood the plan of God. These young children in the youth wanted to do something for God 
and they changed their lives totally for God and they left their weaknesses, they left their pleasure of the world, they left every sin that was entangled to him and they came back to the Lord and served the Lord honestly. And I request every young man and young woman, you also change your life and come back to the Lord and serve the Lord. And tonight now, I'm going to pray for everyone. My brothers, my sister, because these are the big subjects, I wanted to quickly submit about Joseph, about Joshua, about Samuel, about David. Therefore, I went on reading and explaining you the, 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 the examples and all the scriptures that God has given to us. Instead of reading, I just orally, orally I have explained to you. Hope you are able to understand and you are able to understand for your better future and better life. Now, we are, this is the time for prayers. May the Lord bless every young man and young woman. First, we are going to pray for all the youth, sons and daughters, for their education, for their future and everything. Then we are going to pray for all the people, those are weak, sick in different type of diseases and how they will be able to lead their life. What will be their future? More future is tormented for the ladies or the girls. They do not know what will happen to their future. Probably somebody will take an advantage of such children. For them also we are going to pray today. All the families, those who are broken hearted, those who are lost their dear children, we are going to pray for them. Let's all bow down in the praise of God. Today, I have tried my level best to give the important message to the youth. It's not so easy, but this is very, very important. I hope that all the youth, young sons and daughters have understood today's message. May the Lord bless you and guide you like Joseph. May the Lord give you the dream and you shall become a dreamer great in the sight of God. May God guide you like a Samuel. Sorry, like Joshua, that you shall take up the responsibility of your parents, take up the responsibility of elderly person of the church, priests, pastors, leaders, anybody. Spiritually, I'm talking about. Third, take up the responsibility like a salmon and become a prophet of God and understand your calling and understand your birth into this world. Number four, understand about David. That David was a sinner and he, can, he has changed his life. We might be today in so many evil ways. Let us ask the Lord to be changed. No man is a holy man on this earth. Sin entered into this world through Eve and Adam. And that is continuous in every human and in every religion. And if it is in Christians, we are more miserable people. Young sons and daughters, if you are in the sin and sinful nature and worldly pleasures, you have to know only one thing, whether it is pleasing in the sight of God or not, and change your life. Come back to the word of God. Let's bow down and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give all the praise. As we are praying for all the sons and daughters all around, wherever they are seeing this cube, wherever they are watching this news, wherever they are hearing this prayer, Lord, you bless them. Blessings of God shall restore upon them. No son, no daughter shall die untimely. None of them shall come in suicide because life is given to us by God. Life is given unto us by God. Every young man and young woman shall be able to realize that they have this life from God through their parents. Therefore, today onwards, every young son and daughter shall dedicate their life to be holy, to be perfect, to read the word of God, to follow the laws, commandments, and teachings of God, and so also obey their parents, the earthly parents. And if they do not have the earthly parents, they shall obey the spiritual father, those who are guiding them according to the laws, commandments, and teachings of God. Let every young man and young woman listen to this voice of God and be blessed. Father, I pray, such demonic spirit that's holding the young sons and daughters shall be broken. Every tormenting spirit shall disappear from them. Every attack of the devil shall be gone. Every spirit of lust, every spirit of drinks, every spirit of drugs, every spirit of you know, pleasure of the world shall disappear from their mind, from their soul, spirit and body. Such desire shall never be there. Lord, we pray. Every demonic position in their life, which troubles them. Some of them don't want to live in the earth. Some of them, they lost their parents and they said, why we should live? Lord, bless them. Touch such sons and daughters and give them a good life. And those who are waiting for a great bless of God, give them that joy, that blessings, that peace, that happiness of God. Every young son and daughter shall be prosperous. Every young son and daughter shall be holy. Every young son and daughter shall hear the voice of the living God. Every young son and daughter shall see how Jesus paid the penalty of sin, curse, sicknesses and death on this earth before when he was on the earth. My brothers, my sister, as we are hearing the word of God, many sons and daughters, I request you hear the voice of God, hear this prayer so that you shall be blessed. Probably you are getting into headaches, 
Probably you are tormented by some evil spirits. Probably you are you know, dragged by your friends. Probably your friends are making you to sin. Probably your friends are making you to drink. Probably your friends are making you to have drugs and saying to you, enjoy. Remember, such type of joy will destroy your, your soul. Such type of joy will take you to the pit which is burning all the time. Such type of joy and pleasure will take you to the hell fire. And there you should not repent, but repent now and change your life. God shall guide every son and daughter of ours and keep them safe. Bless them and blessings of God shall continue. They shall be away from drugs, drinks, unwanted evil friends. Because the Bible clearly says, the birds of the same feather flies together. Wherever such people are there, we should not go. And we should not be entangled to such people. So that we shall be separated. The glory and the power of God shall continue. The righteousness of God shall continue. The spirit of God that God has given unto us shall remain in us. We shall not be empty temple of the living God. We shall be the temple of the Lord God Almighty, carrying the Holy Spirit of God in us. Lord bless every young son and daughter. Give them good education. Those who are longing for professional degrees, give them professional degrees. Guide them, Lord, what they should be in their life. And they shall be something good. They shall be something great. And they shall be something perfect in their education, in their life, and in their future life. They shall shine. Lord, you give us the example of two young people today. One who has joined the army, another one who has joined the flying, that is called the lady pilot. Lord Jesus, make all of our sons and daughters to become something great in the life. To have a great dream like Joseph. And if they do not have a dream, Lord, help them to create a dream for them. So they shall starve, they shall work for their dream. And the dream shall be holy. The dream shall be righteous. The dream shall be according to the will of God. The dream shall be perfect so that their dreams you shall fulfill. And they shall become something great in the life. Make them work according to the word. Lead them like Joshua. You let Joshua. So also lead the young sons and daughters like Joshua Lord. They shall become, oh Lord, responsible to lead their family life. Lead their brothers and sisters. Lead their parents, those who are uneducated, to a good salvation. To a great salvation. And who can lead? Nobody else but the man and woman who knows the word of God. Who knows the Savior. Who knows the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I pray such young men and women shall have thirst for salvation shall thirsty and hungry for the word of God and shall be thirsty and hungry for the power of God. Create them the vision. Create them the dreams in them. So also make them like Joshua. Anoint them like Samuel to be prophets so that they shall prophesy in young age. And they shall give great prophets talking the secrets of every man and every woman. Holy and perfect, pleasing the sight of God. Anointing many sons and daughters into this world for a greater glory, greater power, greater wisdom, greater knowledge, greater education, professional degrees and studies, and also professional jobs. And they shall be anointed for the glory of God, and they shall be a shepherd's Lord. Finally, we pray, like David, they all shall become king, because you are able to give such position to everyone. And such young sons and daughters that we know, Lord, every family, law in all the cities of India, in all the cities, and in the country of Pakistan, even in UK, even in Canada, even in America, even in Australia, even in Kuwait. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ and I, all around the Middle East, wherever the children are scattered, all around the world, wherever our children are scattered, Lord, touch them and bless them. Revive them and strengthen them. Today onwards, the Spirit of God shall stir in their life. Spirit of God shall stir their lives. Spirit of God shall bless them in their life. They shall be powerful in their spirit. They shall become something great. And they shall be great sons and daughters recognized by the world. This man is a special man. This woman is a special woman. From his youth, he is like that. From her youth, she is like that. And they are a great men and women. Like that, their record shall be. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. No young sons and daughters shall have any sickness. No young sons and daughters shall have any sicknesses, any weaknesses, any drinks practices, any drug practices, any evil practices, any evil addiction, any evil and unwanted, unclean practices, they all shall be separated. Their body shall be given unto the Lord. They shall receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They shall be full of the Holy Spirit of God and they shall be loving sons and daughters, casting out demons. They shall be able to, oh yes, casting out tongue talkers and devil drivers they shall be. They shall speak in tongues and they will cast out devils. They shall have a prophetical word in their mouth and they shall be lovely sons and daughters. Everybody, whenever they will see them, 
they shall say these are the children of oh jesus christ of lord these are the people these are the young sons and daughters they serve jesus therefore they are godly they are holy they are perfect and they are powerful they are doing great work like that the world has to say lord bless all of our young sons and daughters and give them this wisdom knowledge and understanding thank you lord for hearing our prayers and answering our prayers and blessing all such people today in jesus almighty name we pray now we are praying for all those people those who are sick and weak all those people those who are sick and weak we are praying for them never again that spirit of coming suicide will work in the family lord so spirits we bind them in jesus name so spirit that works in the families we bind them in jesus mighty name lord there are so many other names but we pray let your mighty hand touch them and bless them today we pray that demonic power shall disappear from them the demonic sicknesses shall disappear from them the devilic diseases shall disappear from their bodies the satanic sicknesses shall dis- dis- disappear from their bodies the satanic sicknesses shall be vanished we wash them all with the blood of jesus the entire list of sick people we wash them with the blood of jesus we claim the life of jesus to come upon them because jesus died and rose again the same spirit of jesus shall stir in their lives and they shall be revived from their sicknesses they shall be revived from their death bed they shall be revived from their coma status they shall be revived from their last stage and come back to normal no dengue no malaria shall continue in any other country's law father we pray protect the sons and daughters in pakistan protect the sons and young daughters in sri lanka protect the young sons and daughters in india and all the cities of pakistan all the cities of sri lanka all the cities of india and wherever the young sons and daughters are there help them to hear your voice help them to hear your word help them to hear your laws hear them to hear your voice and help them to hear your voice and not any manner of demon any manner of satan that is possessed in the life we break them out in jesus mighty name no daughter shall beat her mother or father no son shall beat his father or mother no children shall beat their parents they all children shall love their father and mother and shall love god lord i pray every young son and daughter shall be free from drug addiction every young and so- young son and daughter shall be free from drinking practices every young son and daughter shall be free from unclean practices every young son and daughter shall be free from all power of darknesses and no sicknesses shall work against them their parents shall be healthy their father mother shall be healthy their brother sister shall be healthy none of them shall be sick lord i pray all the sick list i have given unto you lord you heal them and bless them and revive them keep them totally safe and blessings of god shall continue bless all the families those who are watching us and hearing this prayer oh their home shall be blessed the blessings of god shall restore upon your home blessings of god shall restore upon your son blessings of god shall restore upon your daughters blessings of god shall restore upon your ministry blessings of god shall restore upon your day to day life blessings of god shall restore upon those young sons and daughters those who are committing their life to jesus today and give them good life and long life and healthy life in jesus almighty name we pray amen let's all say amen may the love of god the father the grace of our jesus christ and fellowship of the holy spirit of god be with us receive this benediction and as you receive this benediction you are receiving the blessing of god god is going to touch your families god is going to bless your houses god is going to bless your father god is going to bless your mother god is going to bless the father mother husband wife and all the sons in your house all the daughters in your house are going to be blessed today because this is the love of god the father the grace of our lord jesus christ fellowship of the holy spirit of god through the word of god is entering your home receive it and be blessed in jesus almighty name amen may god bless every one of you may god give you good life Young sons and daughters rejoice. Create a good dream. Become like Joshua to lead your family and your future. Become like a Samuel, a prophet, an anointed servant of God. So also become like David, a great position man in your life. Righteous and holy and always closer to God's heart. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all.